Hi guys, it's Lane here from John Normity again. I'm just doing a basic overview of the John Normity Menismal Modular Milling System. Um, just to explain how all the different parts come together and what options you can choose and how you assemble them and how it works. I'm not going to look too much in detail at the individual components. I'll give a basic rundown of the, the base unit, which is obviously the heart of the whole system. Um, as you can see, it's quite a small compact unit um, because your accessories are built on around that. As a start, we our cover here is 5mm mild steel um, and the, the side plates are 6mm steel into which the, the bearings are pushed into. The bearings are sealed roller bearings, so you should get good life out of that and there's not too much muck that should get into it. It is a single roller mill system. So essentially there's one roller in the middle, it has a knurled surface, fluted surface, which in the process of knurling, it, it actually hardens the surface an extent, to an extent, um, and it's milled against a plate. The plate now has two bends in it, so you get a, to some extent you get a, a three roller effect, as it, it graduates twice as it goes through the roller. The adjustment is via adjusting the position of that plate. So as you can see, if you can see in the video, that, that plate swivels about the top point there and you can then set the different positions where you want to lock it. So once you've got your setting correct, you can then just tighten the wing nut. So no tool specifically required there. Um, and and that's, that's the base unit. In terms of hoppers, we have the modular panel hopper that you then build up onto the unit. It comes in four panels, two sets of two the same. What you essentially do is, these have little hooks underneath at the bottom there. Um, you'll see there's a slight bend on the panel, so, so that bend is curved like that to give you that outward flare of the, the hopper. So you slot one in like that. And you slot the next one that way. And you'll see they have tongues and slots. So on the side panels here you have little slots and you've got little little tabs on the, the section there. So you put these in, you line up those slots. And then you just give them a little twist to lock in place. that side done. Um, obviously I'm just doing one of the tabs here for the demonstration. Just kind of hold it in place sufficiently for what we need to do. And then you do exactly the same on this side. Get them in position, push it tight together and give those tabs a twist. So so that's the unit. It holds pretty solidly, it's tight, it's quite a stable device. Um, so that gives us, it's a 4 litre volume. If we want to extend it, we have hopper extension panels which work in very much the same way. Um, it's also four, four pieces, tab and slot to push them to assemble. So what you would then do, I'm going to turn that at a bit of an angle. That pops in there like that. That pops over there. And we shift those to the side. Same again. Okay. Now you've got the same scenario where you just got the panels on the side that you need to put in the slots. Twist, and twist, then you do the same on this side, I'll actually do it like that just so you guys can see, so there you 
go. Your tabs are protruding that side. For your own assembly, you would obviously do all of them. For the demo, I'm just doing the top two. So that, that would be your extended hopper. Essentially, it takes your volume from 4 litres up to 8 litres total. So it doubles your volume. So that's our modular hopper unit. In terms of cranking options, we have our basic manual hand crank as the standard offering. It's essentially, it's fully steel, pressed in bearings on the sides, a little bit of lubrication. It's 3 mil steel, it's quite a solid piece of equipment. Assembly is pretty simple, I'll turn it an angle there. It's got a D-shaped slot in the side there, which engages with a D-shaped slot on the drive shaft. Simply goes in place and put the screw back on. Obviously you use a spanner just to tighten it up properly. And that is now your direct drive. For if you want to use a drill to drive, the other option that we have available currently is the drill drive adapter. It's basically a sleeve nut because we can't put a drill directly on there. It's slightly larger than what most drills can accommodate on, the, on that shank over there. And the D-shape can be problematic to try and center the drill. So the, the coupling just goes on like that. Thread straight on. And because it's the, the milling is in the clockwise direction, it, it's self-tightening. So you don't really have too many issues with slippage or potential slippage. So that's your drill drive. Put your drive directly onto that and off you go. As, as you may see on the website, we don't really recommend going at high drill speed. Um, it's not seen as ideal for the grain, um, but sort of that's, that's at your discretion. In terms of mounting options, so we have what we call the universal mounting plate. Essentially, if you're doing a DIY job, you can try and use this interface to fit it to whatever you're trying to fit it onto. What we would recommend, however, is our universal mounting plate. What happens is it just clips into place, pushes forward, and you'll see there are two tabs at the bottom there. What you would then do, I'm not going to do it now, is you would put the little tool on the spanner, twist the tab down, and do the same on that side, and it will then lock the two together. Now from there, you have the option of you got six holes, three on either side, so you can make your own wooden base, mount that in, mount it on a table, however you want to use it. Okay. Second option to that, we have a, a round, what, I, what we call the bucket mount plate. Essentially, it is exactly the same as the mount plate. The, the interface is the same. You have the same slots and the same tabs to lock it in place. So you would then, same story, slot it in, lift up the tabs, and now you have that as a single unit. What this does have as well, it's 350 on the outer diameter, um, and I don't know if you can see it, it's got, got a cutout down the side there, so you can push, there's one, two, three, four, five tab positions, so depending on your bucket size, you can then push out the tab, you just bend it downward from, from that point there. And that will then locate it, make sure it's centralized on the bucket while you're milling. What, what a lot of guys do do to prevent dust coming up, they'll put a bit of tape over as well. There are also some holes here which you would, it would be a good idea to put some tape over just to keep the dust contained. That's for some future development which you may see shortly. The final option we have, this is what we call the shelf mount plate. It kind of arose from the need, you know, when you are milling, especially wheat and harder grains, it can take quite a lot of torque on the unit, so you need to hold that, the, the unit down quite tightly. So we developed the shelf mount plate. Essentially, it's, it uses a universal mount plate. So that would be like that in position. And now this component you can 
either using G clamps, you can mount it on the edge of a shelf, you can't really see it here, but on the edge of a shelf like that, or you can bolt it in if you want to do it more permanently. To assemble the two together, the, the, these six holes are line up with the six holes on the, on the shelf mount. So you just bolt those together or use pop rivets, whichever you prefer. Um, now essentially those would be as a single unit. What we do have as well, because if, if it is on the side of a shelf, it's, it's a lot of muck going everywhere. So we have a funnel which attaches to the shelf as well. Very simple. No assembly, this one just pops straight in, so it goes into the groove like that and pops in. So, so you can take it off, remove it, clean it, etc, etc. And what it does is just, it just channels all the dust that's coming off, all the malt, and it'll funnel it into a bucket or whatever you're trying to put your malt into. What we have added as well is little hooks on the top, so if you're doing smaller batches, it's quite convenient. You can just hook a packet on the top there and it basically fills the packet. Then essentially what you can do is just, you know, if you're filling three or four packets, you just stop while, while, when it's filled up and just put on the next packet. So that is our, our mounting options. So that essentially sums up the, the modular units that come together to make up the Menace Mall. Thank you for listening and please keep an eye on our channel, maybe subscribe, as we are always adding products and things do change from time to time as we develop stuff. Thank you for watching.